Moments of Inspiration Brought to you by the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago It is our prayer that this outreach program inspires you to start this new day with Almighty God Who has granted you the gift of today Good morning Trinidad and Tobago And welcome to this week's episode of Moments of Inspiration I am Sanya Bihari, a student minister with the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago, and I feel blessed to be leading in today's devotion alongside presiding elder for the Chase Village Pastoral Region, Mr. Emmanuel Ramkaran. Today, we look at one of the resurrection experiences of the disciples, the encounter with Jesus along the road to Emmaus, and what it means for us as Christ followers to walk in his light. I invite you to bow with me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, for whom no door is closed and no heart is locked, draw near to us now as we gather in spirit and truth to worship and praise your holy name. Risen Christ, we acknowledge you today as the one who conquered death and tore the veil of separation so that we, your beloved ones, can be in full communion with you once more. But we confess, O Lord, that like Peter, we have often denied you. Like Thomas, we have doubted. Like Cleopas and the other disciple, we have been blinded to the reality of your awesome presence. We have sinned against you, O God, and we have sinned against our brothers and sisters through our lack of love and forgiveness. Yet you died for us, and by your grace we are set free. So we thank you, Lord, for loving us despite our unfaithfulness. And we pray that you will guide every footstep and every action so that we will walk in your light and spread your light wherever we go. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I am pleased to welcome to the program Mr. Colin Lizama. Colin is a member of the Vistabella Presbyterian Church, where he currently serves on their local board. But he has been singing praises to God all his life. We listen now to him as he leads us with the song, Into Your Hands. Into your hands, we commend our spirit, O Lord. Into your hands we commend our heart For we must die to ourselves in loving you Into your hands we commend our love I will proclaim your name to all the world, God of our fathers and our God too. Your name shall sound from every voice, O oh Lord, soon every heart will worship you. Spirit, O oh Lord, into your hands we commend our heart, for we must die to ourselves in loving you. Into your hands we commend our love. Into your hands. We commend our love. Thank you so much, Colin, for setting that prayerful tone for our worship today. Friends, the word of God this morning comes to us from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Let us listen to God's word. Now, on that same day, Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, 
Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Today, we are also pleased to welcome back the multi-talented Timothy Bally of the Susamacha Presbyterian Church. Timmy is the current head prefect at Naparima College. He plays at least seven instruments. And not only is he one of the resident pipe organ players at Susamacha, but he is also the organist at Collins Church in Vistabella. He shares his ministry in music now on the saxophone with the most appropriate hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, after which presiding elder Mr. Emmanuel Ramkaran will proclaim God's word. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much, Timothy, for that most appropriate piece. And we want to wish you all the best with your CAPE exams. I invite you to join me in prayer. Jesus, light of the world, as you interpreted the Holy Scriptures to your followers on the road to Emmaus, enlighten us this morning. Warm our hearts and inspire us to live and reflect the light of your love. Amen. Very much saddened by all that had happened in the last three days, two followers of Jesus were walking along the road to Emmaus and discussing recent events which had captivated their minds but had them very puzzled. As they journeyed, they were joined by a stranger asking, what was the topic of their discussion? The two followers of Jesus were surprised to hear the stranger's question, but proceeded to tell all that had happened about Jesus of Nazareth, how he was a mighty prophet by word and actions sent by God to all the people. They recalled how Jesus inspired them with powerful lessons in a new and unique method of teaching. He taught through several parables like the prodigal son and the good Samaritan and by outstanding oratory skills like the very challenging and mind-boggling lessons on the Sermon on the Mount. Then, in a most mournful tone, they reported how the chief priests and Jewish leaders sought and obtained the permission of the Roman authorities to condemn Jesus of Nazareth to death. They emphasized how these authorities found no fault in him, yet he was found guilty, and they allowed the Roman soldiers to humiliate, torture, and savagely beat Jesus, and eventually he was led to his death on the cross. As a result, they lamented that their hope was shattered. They had expected that Jesus of Nazareth, whom they regarded as the Messiah, was the one to redeem their people. Instead, he was gone. The voices of the two followers then became more beat as they spoke about what some women reported earlier. They had seen a vision of angels who told them that Jesus was alive. The disciples, who were their friends, didn't believe the women, so they went to the tomb themselves and saw that it was empty, just as the woman had said, Jesus' body was not there. At that point, the stranger began to reveal the prophecies of the prophets about the Messiah, interpreting the scriptures about all the experiences, torture and rejection that the Messiah had to undergo before entering into his glory. They, they were now approaching the village and the stranger surged ahead of the two walkers who thought that the stranger was moving on to some other destination. They had so much enjoyed his companionship and teachings that they were deeply moved to invite him to remain with them, advising that people should not walk in darkness and of the need to be careful, especially due to the sensitive nature of the current events. The stranger accepted their gesture of kindness and remained with them. When they had gathered at the table to share a meal, the stranger took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave the broken bread to the two followers. At that point, they realized that it was Jesus of Nazareth who was walking and conversing with them all along the way. However, as soon as they knew that it was him, Jesus disappeared. They confessed to each other, saying, Were not our hearts burning within us? These two followers who walked in the light of Jesus then excitedly reported the experience with Jesus on the road and how Jesus had revealed himself, declaring, The Lord has risen indeed. Sisters and brothers, in our time, when we journey, walking among people is less frequent when compared to commuting in cars, maxi-taxis, buses, or even the water taxi or Tobago ferry service. However, we have the opportunity to talk or engage in conversation with somebody along the way. What if the other person is wearing headphones, earbuds, or occupied with mobile phone, tablet, or laptop? Then, 
a situation like this may be challenging. Should we try to engage them to speak of our risen Lord and Savior of the world? When we are so preoccupied with ourselves as we journey, can we experience the light of our Lord? Can we feel his presence and hear his voice? And if we could, would we be able to share the holy light of our Lord to our fellow travelers? If we are able to engage in conversation with fellow pas passengers or walkers, what would be the topic of our discussion conversation these days? Will it be centered about crime, rising unemployment, protests for water supply, protests for road repairs, property taxes? Yes, we have countless topics for discussion every day. However, do we feel the need to express the love and light of the Lord in any or all of these discussions? Do we invite the presence of our divine master and holy God in our conversations? When Jesus appeared to his disciples, it was done to bring them back together, to forgive them for their weaknesses during the time of his trial and crucifixion, and to strengthen their faith and prepare them for the great commission. Jesus Christ, the same who spoke the words, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Shared a very interactive relationship with the disciples and followers. He walked with them, talked with them, interpreted the Holy Scriptures, illuminated and empowered them. The disciples had the brilliant presence and glowing experience of walking in the light of Jesus. The disciples were commissioned by our merciful and loving God to go out into the world and take the light and love of God to all people everywhere. All faithful believers can have that presence of his holy light in their lives. This light is meant to glow and spread to everyone. All believers are invited to have an interactive relationship with all God's people everywhere. Jesus himself instructed us, as in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In this very challenging and demanding time of our lives, have we, have we given consideration and examined ourselves whether we are living and having an interactive relationship with the people in our lives? Do we visit walk and talk or engage others in some inspirational, inspirational and uplifting discussion as we journey from time to time? My dear viewers, we are never short of opportunities. There are sick persons at homes and hospitals, persons mourning the loss of a loved member of family, relative or friend. There are victims of crimes who are hurting and need comforting and encouragement. They are needy and lonely persons who are in need of companionship, some in geriat geriatric homes. They are persons who are imprisoned. We can visit and take the love and light of Jesus to them. As Jesus taught his followers, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 40, his recorder is saying, are we doing what the Lord requires of us and letting our light shine before others? It is never too late. We can start at this very moment. We can make our light shine before others by walking or following in the example Jesus Christ and becoming his imitators. How do we do this? By giving praise and thanks to God. By having faith in God's steadfastness and promises for eternal life, by loving others, by promoting unity in spirit, body, heart, and mind, by being kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. Through all these ways, we can walk in the light of God and share his light with the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for sharing that most powerful message with us today. 
Friends, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to our Board of Men's annual National Whitsuntide Conference. This takes place on Saturday, 3rd June 2017 at the Arunadai Presbyterian Church in Balmain and it starts at 9.30 a.m. The theme for this conference is The Laity, Witnessing for Christ. The guest speaker for this event is no stranger to the viewers of Moments of Inspiration. It is Rev. Karen Kalawan of the Marabella Bonaventure Pastoral Region. All are invited, men, women, youth and children, to be a part of the Board of Men's Conference on Saturday 3rd June at the Arunadai Presbyterian Church in Balmain. I now invite Colin Lizama once more to share a powerful piece with us this morning. My tribute to God be the glory. How can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved Yet you gave to prove your love for me And the voices of a million angels Could not express my gratitude All that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he has done with his with his blood he has He has raised me to, to God Be the glory for the things He has done Just let me live, let me live my life and let it be pleasing, Lord, unto Thee. And should I gain, should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, Save me with his power. He has raised me. That's why I sing to God. Be the glory for the things he has done. things 
Jesus He has done for the victories that He has won for the things He has done to to God be the glory for the things He has done. He has done. Thank you, Colin, for blessing us with your wonderful voice this morning. You have truly blessed our hearts and we pray you continue to use your gifts in tribute to God. Friends, we have reached the end of our program today. We thank you all so much for joining in this time of devotion as we gave praise to God and we listen to that call to walk with Jesus Christ. I take this opportunity to invite you all to worship with us at any Presbyterian church near your home. And if you are in my area, the Princess Town Pastoral Region, you can join us at St. Andrews in Princess Town at 7 a.m., McDonnell at Jordan Hill from 7.30 a.m., Irie Village at 8.30 a.m., or St. Mary's at 9.30 a.m. If you have missed any previous episodes of Moments of Inspiration, you can find them on our YouTube channel, Presbyterian Church, Trinidad and Tobago. And for any further information about the Presbyterian Church, please contact us via our website, www.pctt.org.tt. I leave you now with today's Moment of Inspiration. Let us walk in the light as He Himself is in the light and let us have fellowship with one another.